What is it to snub your horse or lay him down? Snubbing your horse is just tying him up to a post. In the middle of a... So I I think that's the thing that was like, a lot of the times, yeah, I guess to your extent, to to your definition, they could do that anywhere, a post anywhere, right? right? But usually snubbing them down is insinuated to have been a center post in a circular corral where you oftentimes will rope the horse and then you kind of reel them in, so to speak, around that pole. Is that correct? Yeah, that's one way to do it. That's kind of your most most extreme. And then and well, and it's some... that it's best illustrated through John Wayne and Cowboys. He does that when he's first breaking the horses. Yeah, it's been so long since I've seen that movie that yeah, if probably... I remember correctly, I think yeah. that's what he does. But yeah. Well, I mean, that was a way that was done a lot of times. And like my my grandpa's both told me, he said, We didn't start horses generally when they were when I when they were my age, you know, in their early teens. Uh not quite teen, but teens anyway uh they didn't start two and three year old horses they rode five and six year old horses to start because they get, had to get on them and they had to last a whole day oh sure so they, you're, you're they, physically mature you got all the muscling you can right withstand a day's work that makes sense right and they needed to ride them now so there yeah. wasn't much for horse training it was just being able to get on them and go and 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 then teach as as you went uh horse training has come a long long ways from the time my grandfather's were kids till the time you know even i was a kid it was kind of phasing out uh, i had some guys that were you know clinicians never been heard of before ray hunt was probably the first one of his kind uh to teach people how to do things and ray hunt wasn't exactly a <laughs> gentle fella either people or horses but uh the whole idea is is to is to get in the mind of the horse instead of you know subdue them so one of the means of subduing them was to rope if you had to, or if you could get a halter on them and tie them up close to a post that stood in the center. It was called a snubbing post. Um, saddle them up, get on them, and turn them loose. Um, sometimes they'd turn them loose with just the saddle on and let them buck out a bunch until they got tired of that. And then you'd you know get somebody who's dumb enough to get on them. Uh, or, or athletic the rodeo. Enough to stay on them. Yeah. <laughs> like here's where you get the saddle bronc uh, right. event. But it would surprise you when I was a kid, we didn't have a snubbing post in our round corral. And the number of people that would see that who knew what, you know, working a horse was, even the old school way, uh, they'd say, where the hell's your snubbing post? Yeah. So well, we don't have one. Well, how, how are you doing this? You like know? a whole technological breakthrough. Like how, how do yes. you make that happen? Like that, that makes no sense. That's not the way it's done. Right. How do you, how do you, it, yeah, it, it didn't make any sense to them. I said, well, we use groundwork and we work this horse and, and pressure release. And they're like, I mean, it was like talking in a completely foreign language. And, and why some are you doing would say, groundwork when you're supposed to be on top of the horse? You don't touch right. the ground. <laughs> right. We ain't got time for that. Yeah. That, you know, there's no time for this foolishness. It yeah. isn't going to buy you anything. But yeah, maybe a few less broken bones, you know. Yeah. And, and no a, kidding. A quieter horse, you know. So, uh, and some would scoff at it. Nah, it doesn't work, you know. Yeah. And others would, would go, oh, huh. you know, you could see the, the light bulb kind of, uh, huh. You and know, that's, and, so that's interesting because you're saying that's like 60s and 70s. The, yeah. the, because you're, you're late, now late talking 60s about. 60s and 70s is when I started really working horses. But what I'm saying is like in Montana, right? I, I get it, rural part of the country, but like you're talking the mid 20th century and suddenly there's a, to an extent, we're not saying like we're the ones that came up with it or anything, but like there's kind of a revolutionary turn in the middle of the 20th century from breaking horses to training horses. That's crazy to me because you would think they would have figured that stuff out earlier in like the late 1800s to early 1900s. When well, you're starting to get it, automobiles and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, but it depends on where you're at, right? Right, I and mean, that's why I say I mean, rural country, but yeah, but at the same time, take a look at uh, uh, take a look at your lepizoners. Yeah, completely different cult, country culture, a different use for that horse. Yeah, uh, and I think they're largely trained in a traditional way, uh, 
that they have been trained for hundreds of years as a war horse. Yeah. Uh, very well disciplined, but I don't think they're getting on those horses and just bucking them out. You know, no. they're, they're, they're doing a lot of groundwork with them. So uh, it, it's a matter of utility and partially, and I say utility a lot around, <laughs> around this because that's what it is. It's like, how do I get something done? The best, the easiest, the safest. Well, yeah. and I hate to break people's hearts that may follow us, especially for horses, but like, yeah, they're, they're our family members. We treat them like our family members, but they're also a tool. Like they're, they're there to help get some work done. Just like we go out to hop on the ATV or get in the side by side. That's a tool to go bring in the cows or go do work. The horse is also a tool. I, I, yeah. I completely agree with that. When you say the word utility, it's taking but, but a I think family member and you're like using that. them as a tool. Right. I, I think that, that unless you're using that horse for, recreation which is a whole other different way of viewing something um you know it's they're they're a tool they yeah. that's what that's what they're designed to do that's what we use them for not that we don't give them the best of care that we can right um not that they don't get similar to the or as good or sometimes better care than someone who uses their horse as a recreational tool and it's still a tool it's still a means to do something yeah. uh so yeah, have it, having a change like that, um, you know, uh, Genghis Khan, tremendous horseman. The Mongols, tremendous horsemen. Invented uh, the stirrups. Tough little horses. You know, what do they do? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what they did back then. It would uh, be interesting to take a day. Like, oh, hey, I'd hey, love to Mr. go back Mr. Genghis Khan. <laughs> how, did, how does this work? <laughs> yeah, look at the Romans, you know. Um, any any Anyone who was able to conquer large portions of real estate yeah. uh, and using horseback uh, by the largest means is horseback to do it. How did uh, they do I was going to say the Romans they... are kind of an exception. They didn't really use horses. Honestly, they used a lot of foot soldiers, which is crazy. They created the interstate, but they, not the, yeah. not really. Yeah. But, but they still had mounted people. They did have mounted, sure. m- mounted groups. Uh, officers don't walk, do they? Captain Carpenter. Yeah, exactly. See, do you drive? Yeah, I'm guessing not. You point your finger a lot. Yes, I do. <laughs> there's my point, right? So, uh, and wait till you get back here and you're busted down to Buck Private again. <laughs> your mother will be pointing her finger, telling you what to do. <laughs> yeah, but um, I would love to go back and see how some of these things do and how they how they perform because there are techniques that we use that were used centuries ago that are right. very good, uh, very well done, very quiet. Uh, one of the things that we do that was done by Basque sheep herders, of all things, an old Basque tricks that we that we use for calming a horse um, and, and really desensitizing. And it's, you know, my dad picked that up from somebody, you know, when he was a kid. Use what works, yeah. you know, and you develop your own thing. It's not a, it's, I've said it a million times, it's not a cookie cutter type of, of, uh, project it's it's something about you connect with that horse and or mules mules the same way they're a lot smarter <laughs> you know yeah. you better be on your toes with a mule because they'll they'll eat your lunch in a hurry it's not that they're stubborn it's they're smarter than you are so you know deal with that but um being able to uh have the the wherewithal to not just force your horse to do something but make that horse think it's their idea and then you know they get rewarded for it or not rewarded for doing the hard thing, then, you know, you're going to have an animal that uh, largely will do what you want them to do when really you absolutely need them to do it. And they will do some things that you never thought possible. Or I've been astounded at times when I've been able to have these horses do is just like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Well, and that kind of goes to the next thing, because I, I said this also at the start was laying a horse down. I've, I've never done that. And I know you have, but it's... um. I could see where people from the outside might see that as potentially abusive because it, it to start off, like you, you kind of have to, to force it a little bit, but I think it also comes from your, to your point, getting them to understand, to trust you and to, and to do it. And if you could real quick, we've got about five minutes. Uh, what's the process to laying a horse down and what's also potentially the purpose to laying a horse down? Um, there's a couple different ways to do it. I don't do it to make them submit to me. Right. As it's not a early physical, training. It's, yeah, it's not, not aggressive. No, it's not aggressive. It's not dominant or being dominant. 
Uh, but there are some people who do that. Right. Uh, okay. Whatever. I have taken advantage of the fact that a, a colt's laying down and I'm rubbing on them in, during the imprinting process and they're laying there and they want to get up and then I'll hold them down. Whole different thing. I mean, that horse is already down. I've used that as a, as a way to let them know that, no, I'm controlling you, but there's no fight. It, I mean, it's very, very gentle, calm, easy. That's the extreme to the earliest I would do that. What I normally do is I'll have a horse that's, for the most part, finished. Uh, they're they're ready to go. And I've done this for uh, clients who have an extremely, a very tall horse. And she's a, particularly a woman. She's a short woman. And what I'll have that horse do, I can start out by having them kneel down on, a, on, on one knee. When you do that, you're dropping that stirrup down so that person can get in. Give them a cue. But generally what I'll do is I'll just pick that foot up like I'm going to look at the bottom of their hoof. And then I will pull them backwards until they they start to have to lay that leg down or their, the other front foot will stretch out and they'll go down. And I'll just work my way down that way. It, it takes a little time, but then you can actually get that horse. to. They'll just come right on over. It takes nothing then to just turn that, tip that nose um, to the inside of, of where they would be laying on the opposite side and just tip them over when they come down, just tip them over and they'll roll right over and then keep them calm, keeping them calm and doing something and praising them for it. Then what you'll have happen is you give them a cue, they'll drop down. They may lay down. You, then you got to, then you have to untrain them. So that, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> Oops, uh, went a little too far, but they got it. And there was no issue to it. Yeah. Uh, and you could do that. You know, dad, one of his, some of his last horses he trained, he had to have a hip replaced. And he was training those horses, but he couldn't get up and couldn't swing that hip, that leg over him. So what he was doing is he was teaching these horses to lay down. He was climbing on them and then letting them up. And he was able to to do that. Um, so a little bit earlier than what I would normally do it, but he did it out of a necessity because he couldn't swing yeah. his dang leg over without being in, you know, horrible pain. A requirement. So, <laughs> yeah, kind of a mounting requirement. But, it you know, it worked out. And anything that you do like that, what's the benefit? You know, 150 years ago, if uh, you were going to attack your enemy or you had your enemy coming into a funnel of a uh, some area and you were a uh, cavalry or, say, the Indian Wars, and you had a war party and you could lay your horses down, keep them quiet, lay on them, and this has been done for, you know, thousands of years. I will say that because I can't imagine it wasn't done in wartime in other places yeah. in Europe lay that horse down and then when the time is right everybody gets up and you you have a an entire you know foe that's that's either certainly flanked or surrounded and then you know you can go in and decimate them a good movie that shows that actually is do you remember it's got Clint Eastwood no. the outlaw Josie Wales there's a a uh, Union oh. Cavalry Patrol going by, and him and the kid before the kid dies, they lay oh, on the horse to try and yeah, yeah, try and hide from him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yep. been used for long, 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 long ago I mean, in Europe. Why not? It's a technology, a form of technology, right? Yeah, right. So, Us using using that animal in ways that would not normally be used. Sure, but it doesn't Unexpected. do itself, right? Yeah, horses don't hide by laying down. No, not at all. The best I've ever seen a horse hide is by standing completely still. And looking and at you. <laughs> well, when they're wearing a bell yeah. and they're part of a, a part of a herd that gets brought in and they hear you coming, that bell mare, usually a mare, because they'll stick with her, they will stand stock still and not move because they know that bell will, will uh -huh. alert you where they're at. It's funny to watch. Uh -huh. Anyway, those are some old school stuff and uh, our take on them, so... With that, we will take that conversation and put it out the pasture.